Roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, to the greatest podcast on earth. Step right up and experience the magnificence that is the Two Ring Circus Podcast. You'll gasp, <gasps> you'll laugh, <laughs> and you'll be amazed at what comes next. Amazing. Don't worry about the smell. It's just the stars of our show, Tom Italiano. Oh, hey. <laughs> and Matt Bradshaw. What are you doing? Welcome. <laughs> oh, hi, Matt. G'day, mate. What's going on there? There. Oh, <laughs> Scritchy's too. Scritchy's making an appearance. She does that. Yeah. There. How's, how's your week? Hey, my w- Oh. <laughs> Hi. What's up? <laughs> oh, it's the Three Ring Circus. Why now? Why now? No. Because you know we're doing something. Crazy cat. Haven't you been fed? Should we start again? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah, it doesn't matter. Take two. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, we can. She's great. Do you want to start again? Oh, I don't mind. No, I'm good. I don't care. <laughs> She's all right. To be a, to be fair, our listeners will expect this kind of interruption every now and then. Yeah. From someone or something. Yeah. We've actually been pretty good. We generally don't get interrupted. We also generally are the ones that interrupt each other. <laughs> Occasionally we get back on track to the thing we were talking about before. Occasionally. <laughs> Luckily, we haven't started yet, so we haven't been derailed. Oh. Yeah. No. All right then. Well, in that case... What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Food poisoning. I had food poisoning. Mm. Yes. I no longer do. Mm. I actually had the thought today, I have never felt this good. That's what he said doing on the phone. Because <laughs> I had never felt that bad. <laughs> <laughs> You've, you've had food, food poisoning before, though. Gastro. Yeah, I think I have twice. I don't. Um, I don't remember it being as bad as this. Yeah, right. Uh, but I think maybe it's just my. It's my most recent experience. Yeah. Um, but that was not good. It was highly unpleasant. Um, food poisoning does tend to be the sort of thing that a lot of people, a lot of people say, like, like when they say they've had the flu. It's like. You haven't had the flu. You've just... You've, you've Actually, you've just got a cold. So a lot of yeah, people okay. kind of just get sick yeah. for whatever reason. Vomit. Yeah. And, you know, in the next day they're fine. Yeah, well, That's I wasn't not fine, what no. food poisoning's like. Well, I've, it was five days for me. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. You poor thing. And it was five days of being lulled into a false sense of security as well a couple of times, kind of going, I feel really good, so I'll eat that. And then, mm. well, maybe it's gone. It's not gone. I think I still got it a bit. I just feel way better. I just, I've eaten two boxes of all brand in the last two days, so. Okay. I, my theory was high fiber, soak up, whatever, fluids there. Okay. To, just to, yeah, to, yeah. It's a, well, the theory worked. Okay. I think I was on the arse end of it anyway. Yeah, well, that's, well, I've got a face on. To run its course. Mm. All right. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to that? It's water under the bridge. Okay. Is that the last one? <laughs> I don't know. I might squirt another one in no. somewhere. <laughs> Terrible. Thanks. <laughs> hey, I found a cool, cool new game mm. um, called PDQ. Pretty darn quick, it's mm-hmm. called. We should play it on the podcast. Okay. So it's just a deck of cards and each card has a letter on it. And you put down three cards, and then you have to come up with a word that has those three letters in it. Oh, wow. Really fun. Wow. Yeah, and then we, it's not in the game, but then I added a twist to the game where you have to add. Here's the thing. So the idea is to be the first person to spit out a word, but that's kind of a bit like, you know, too uh, competitive. So I was like, you, everyone can get their word out, whatever. So the next part of the game is you then have to make a sentence with your word. And if you make the second sentence, you have to make a sentence with both words. And if there's three people playing, you have to make a sentence with three words. Really fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Would that be fun to listen to? No. 
<laughs> no, it might be, because then you'd have like three letters. Let's say I pick, th- I'll, I'll pick three letters now. All right, imagine these three letters uh. with, with your uh, your mind's eye. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, P K G. Mm. Package. Right. Mm. Um. um I don't know if I can come up with it. Because I, I just said the word. So package is a good one. Um, I'm learning the rules as we go along. Like so many games, you learn the rules better by just kind of playing it and yeah, working instead out. of listening to a podcast. Unlike when yeah. my kids and I played uh, the game of life and we realised that there was one entire deck, the main deck of cards, that hadn't been used all oh, the game. None of us know. Didn't need them. Well, no, but... Might have missed the point a little bit. <laughs> Except Game of Life. It's a bit weird. I've not played it. Do you understand the premise of it even? No, I don't, I've never played it. I don't, don't uh, know. It's a board yeah. game where you you are born and, you know, get an education or, you know, leave school and or, like go to college or yeah. don't go to college and get a job and just make life choices. Right. In different paths. Kids, marriage, retirement, death. Okay. Yeah, it's fucking weird. <laughs> I won. You are winning at the game. Unlike real. Oh. No, so you so are, man. The same coin. Yeah, no, you're doing great. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, you, you have a life that many people would uh, be envious of. Yeah. yeah. Not all people, but many. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's absolutely true. And you can't have it all. That's the thing, like, you know, so. No. You're that kind of person. Uh, a little bit like me where people would say oh it must be so good to just like drop everything and go like you know just see your mate on a holiday somewhere and we're like yes it would it will also be great to have two kids in a marriage that's running really really well and you know <laughs> have a good, reti- have good, a good retirement plan also don't also have that good if the reality was that you can just drop everything and just go on holiday well, that's my point but like what all people see is the fact that oh, you and I just decide to, to pop to Perth for two days to see our mate it's like oh it must be so great you just drop everything to... actually we plan for six weeks to do that mm. just drop everything yeah mm. um, so okay so but package it must be great by the way yeah it must yeah. be yeah. Yeah. yeah package yeah. what happens Next. So now you make a sentence out of package. I do? Yeah. Or you do? No, you do, because you came up with the word. Oh, the pretty idea... sweet package, Dom. Oh, great. Um, I can't think of another word that has those things in it. Um, but if I did, um, hack... what was it? Peking? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Peking. Stop picking up a package. <laughs> okay. So that's the game. Right. Yeah. And if the third person was there, it's like, stop picking up a picking package. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey yeah um i was watching so um when i can't sleep and i had one of those nights last night i i, I um went to bed at about half past 12 and woke up at about half past four and then i was just done awake mm, very annoying it's happened to be two sundays in a row Eek. Yeah, uh, Liam, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Just everyone's fucking tired, so it's fine. <laughs> everyone is. Um, but I, my current regimen when I wake up in the middle of the night is to. I've been working my way through the two Ronnies series. Two Ronnies were Best. English comics. Did you in see the, the late sixties, early seventies? Where he's in the ah, oh, so you're not through to the most recent stuff they did. Oh no! Towards the end. No, 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 no. Oh, so no, that's I'm literally starting gold. from the start. Yeah, it's it's really yeah. interesting because I've I mean I've only ever seen bits and pieces, so it's really interesting to watch them all back to back and watch how it progresses, and certainly watch the who writing for them. Like okay. The principal writer on episode three of the third series is John Cleese. Yeah, of course. And yeah. Graham Chapman. Yeah, yeah. Because they they did a lot of writing together, and it's really obvious. Like when you see it. They, they feel like Monty Python sketches. It's, <laughs> cool. a re, it's a really different it's a different thing than what they... Do you know... So I don't know if anyone knows who I'm talking about because it's, it's a fucking long time ago. That's all right. Um, uh, you know the two Ronnies, obviously. Ronnie, Ronnie Corbett, Barker. Ronnie Barker. Yeah, Ronnie Barker, Ronnie yeah. Corbett, English comics. Um, the story... You might know this story. The story goes that um, they had a team of writers and Spike Milligan wrote for yeah. them and... And lots of like classic British comedy writers wrote their material for them, um, but they started getting material from a guy named um, Gerard Wiley. Uh, 
they got this really great sketch and um, they were trying to work out how they could get in touch with him to see if they could actually use it or not. Who was it? It was Ronnie Barker. Yeah. He stood yeah. up at a production meeting. And they said, we, just, we need to find out who this guy is. <laughs> I'm Gerard Wiley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently the production team said, no one likes a smart ass. <laughs> but yeah, so he was always, always listed as Gerard Wiley on there. Great. The credits, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, how to get into that when I can't sleep? I was watching that. Oh. Is that why you can't sleep? Because it's a really good reason to wake up in the middle of the night to watch the two Ronnies. Ah, that's pretty cute. Yeah. No, no. I used um, to watch them as a kid because obviously, you know, um, I spent the first 10 years of my life in the UK when they were still making stuff. Yeah, right. So that was, you know, Sunday night viewing after yeah, Sheepdog cause, Trials. <laughs> well, because two channels, three channels? Technically, by the time I was a kid, we we had BBC One, BBC Two, something else which didn't play very often. It was like Test Pattern most of the time, oh. and ITV. ITV. Yeah. Yeah. And right. So, I think when in '87 when we left. Oh, by the time I went back when I was in Year Eleven, which was '94, I went back and people started having Sky TV, and it was Isn't like it crazy. Amazing. I mean, I, it's. Um, the way technology has ramped up oh. the on de- the on demand nature of the world we live in now yeah it's just fucking remarkable it's glorious it's absolutely glorious I mean because I grew up in country South Australia and we had two TV channels we had the ABC yeah and you know I was four I didn't watch the ABC because the ABC <laughs> was all about news and current affairs yeah play school in the, uh, in the morning but that's that's pretty well in and uh, and one of those weird regional stations that kind of tries to get you to think it's like a really good one because it's called Win, but really it's just a crap version <laughs> of the city one. <laughs> Did you do this on the last podcast? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, no, this was GTSBKN. Jeez. I know. I don't yeah. even know what it stood for. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't understand how those regional stations work because they weren't, if my memory is correct, they they didn't just have all programs from Channel 7 or all programs from Channel 9. They had just shit from everywhere. They'd yeah, just... they were just licensed stuff. Is that how it works? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, Plus, the stuff back then, it would have been like, oh, the tape's arrived, we can play it to broadcast it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I'm, maybe in the course of this story, I'll be able to remember why I brought up watching the two Ronnies. Because you've been not sleeping, so that's what your original Yeah, is. yeah, but... Yeah, maybe that's what it was. Oh, huh. anyway. Um, <laughs> but I woke up from... I'm going to do... There's nothing more boring in this world than having someone tell you what their dreams are when they first wake up in the morning. Oh, really? I do that all the time. There's nothing more boring than anyone telling you. <laughs> really? I'll have to check that. I'm going to give you a really quick, weird, fucking weird... I had an... When I've been really stressed in the world. It's nothing more boring. Yeah. Right. I've had... Uh, Can you start I've... calling me in the morning when you wake up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, do you want to hear my dream? You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. Do you want to hear mine? No, it's boring. <laughs> um, when I'm really stressed, I have nightmares. And I used to get them really badly. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I occasionally have kind of bad dreams. I had a really weird experience last night, though. I, I dreamt that, um, I dreamt, I dreamt that I woke up and there was someone in my bed, and it was a mate of ours, or someone you and I know. In a, not naked, in a suit, but like in a bear suit. So half in <laughs> no, half in bed half hour and like leaning over the top of me with like a really fucking manic crazed kind of grin okay so that was so I woke up and that was looking at me so I woke up with a massive start and then tried to fight him off and then realised in my dream that I was only dreaming so I kind of relaxed a bit but somewhere somewhere in the struggle managed to get two fingers in his mouth for whatever reason. (laughs) Um, And then in my dream, realized my fingers were wet and went, oh God, you're really here. So I was- What? Yeah, so I had this weird dream within a dream thing and I woke up from that and there was fucking no way I was going back to sleep. 
Ah. It was really quite horrific. And it's still, like, I can picture every moment of it right now. And it was, obviously, it was yeah. some hours ago. Because wow. it's now half past ten at night. Yeah. And you, how many two Ronnie's episodes did you watch? Uh, two. Oh. 45 minutes each. Whoa. Yeah. Do you know what, uh, when you said... Um, when I'm stressed, I have nightmares. You know what went through my head? <laughs> like it, that sentence sounds like the lyric of a chorus of a song of like our favourite 70s, 80s, 90s rock bands when they've tried to write songs recently when the principal songwriter isn't involved anymore. Right. And like, and they, they write great music, right? But their lyrics is just crummy as hell. And they're like, you're like, oh, you still, you can still sing. And you guys play great. In fact, everything about this sounds amazing and it's really, really good. But this is awful. Why isn't, can't anyone tell you that you can't write lyrics? Yes. Yes. This isn't in direct relation to the new Steve Perry song, it's, is it? Yes, it is. Is it? God, it's terrible. Oh, my God. The vocal's cool. Like, the way he's, like he's older, clearly, <sighs> and he's got a bit of a drawl about him, but he can still sing, like, beautifully. The lyrics are unbelievably awful yeah and even the p- point where like the title of a song which I can't remember off the top of my head but Erasing it, oh yeah Erasing I'm Erasing like it's like that's such a weak weak set of syllables yep you know and so even that you kind of as a, it's like, like a working title it's like Unskinny Bop no Unskinny Bop <laughs> like totally works as a song like even like so yes I know I mean, you made yeah it was a working, yeah, title, a working just, title it's like oh yeah even Susudio which is a working title do you oh, know yeah. the story of that no oh, but, yes I know it's a you, working title well the Susudio is like because Phil Collins as it turns out writes songs the way I do which is like he just makes a bunch of noise and then sings a bunch of things yeah, yeah. sounds yeah and then he turns he takes from the sound an idea of oh that sounds like that word and then writes a lyric around the the thing that he thinks it sounds like yeah. so we wrote the studio right wrote the verses got to the chorus and went I actually don't have anything I can't think of anything that goes with it I'll just keep what I had yeah right which is to studio like it's not anything it doesn't mean anything um, but I love that he just went sounds cool ah whatever you know the rest of the song works um, but this Steve Perry song it's like oh, it's man. it's great the playing's great yeah Sounds great. It I love the way, like, I, like he's an older fella, and he, I love his phrasing in it. Apart from what he's saying, it's like you just think. I, I found like that with you know some of the older, you know, the Sebastian last Sebastian Bach record where the vocals are just insane, right? Incredible, right? And the songs are not, <laughs> and it's it's hard because like. You kind of hold these people up to a standard of what, you know, what, like the combination of what they had in the past with the people that they played with and the songs they were part of. And, you know, they weren't really the principal songwriters. Um, and the material was so classic. Um, and I think something happens to them. It's like, I think with, like, say, people like Beyonce, like, is, isn't anyone telling them that this is crummy? Oh, clearly not. Like, I don't think, that, you know, the producer's like, it's, um, what's his face? Remember you played me that um, last Kanye West thing? It's like, are these people so famous and so, um, I don't know. I'm just surrounded by yes, man. Unpeachable? I don't, uh, whatever the word is. Yeah. I, don't even, I don't have the word. See, I can't even think properly when I think about it because I'm so stunned that no one's saying... This needs a bit of work, dudes. Mm. Like, it's got it's 90% there, but, you know... And I think, yeah, a lot of people will for, who don't care about lyrics and stuff will forgive it, but I think that's the thing about their past successes is they... There were people in the team that went, not good enough yet, not good enough yet. We need, oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Maybe, actually, do you know what I said? Surrounded by yes, Ben, but maybe when you talk about the Steve Perrys of the world... Um, Maybe they're so removed and the industry is so kind of fragmented now that they actually don't have a team of people. No, I... They've got got the musos to play the parts. The musos aren't going to say 
to the to the guy who's hired them. Yeah. It's very wow. unlikely for the muso to say, yeah. Is that the best you can do? Particularly, particularly if that's single. after he hasn't done anything for how many years? And people love it. Yeah. I mean, the most of the reaction I've seen is because, like I said, the, like you can really. I'm not trying to trash it. No. Because I can hear how beautiful the playing is. I can hear great it sounds. I love the way he sings it. Um, and it's there's no there's not a lot of messing around with the vocal. It's like it's it's wavery. And it's yeah, it's quivers yeah, yeah. in the right spots. Like you know, it's a live vocal. Yeah, with yeah. Not a lot of yeah, work done on it. It feels pretty real. Yep. Um, but there's this. It's just uh, you know what. Mm. That's that would fail Year Nine poetry. Mm. Um, in school, so I think maybe you're right. You know, there's no, there are no A and R guys now. Like we're putting a record together. This is what it is. And, yeah. Um, I just, it's just, it seems to happen so often, and I wonder if that's why just they don't sell records because there are no, there's no quality control like there was. Well, I'm not saying I'm not. It's not. I'm not coming at this. Go. You know, oh, I'm a songwriter and I know everything about songwriting. But I, I just feel like um, you kind of you can compare their their past their current work to their past work, and in many respects, it it stacks up really well. And in vital ones, we go this could be this could be big, and the reason why it can't be big is because I, th- I think there are often it's lyrically. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's musically, like, but. Um, you know, some of the stuff, like, you know, like, Warren put out an album, it was like, oh, it's just, it's close. And it's, you know, it's in the vein of what the band is and stuff like that, but it's a bit of a, it's, it's not good enough yet. Uh, Someone should be saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Particularly when you say Warren, because when, when Warren did those, the last two albums with Janie Lane, Ultraphobic and Belly to Belly, um, 96 they're great records they are great records but they were on dinky little labels like yep. they didn't have a record company anymore. they were on no. CMC International yeah. where a lot of kind of hard rock bands that were big in the 80s that got pushed aside when here's a 10 gram recording kind budget of dark yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and we'll release it when, when yeah. Guns N' Roses changed everything and then, and then grunge changed everything yeah. and these guys were like oh fuck what do we do now so um everyone you know got dropped from their record deals and all that sort of stuff but um those albums didn't sell because they weren't in fashion at the time but they're spectacular yeah um so it's still capable they're still capable of doing it but yeah he was he was the principal guy wasn't he yeah like he yeah. was the guy oh uh, yes yeah, uh, those kind of things interest me um so i yeah i i I'd seen a lot of comment about that song, at Steve Perry's song, and so I, I listened and watched the video. It's a great video too. Really cool video. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just in a, you know, it's a jam in, in a room. and Yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't think he comes off particularly well in the ah, video. You know, he's clumsy. He's a bit of a clumsy old fella. That's all right. We'll forgive him for that. <laughs> yeah, I just, but again, the quality control thing, I think they could have done... They could have done better. Yeah. Like if there was someone else just say, just a different edit. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And it, but it is good. It looks yeah. good. Um, I mean, I, it's actually not that hard to make something look good these days. Like you watch so much YouTube stuff. Yeah. Um, I got a couple of car guys just that me. I watch. Um, that clearly do all their own stuff. They're clearly just using iPhones yeah. to do it all. And it fucking looks good. Mm-hmm. And that's where everyone's watching stuff on their phone yeah yep so it only has to look that good <laughs> I mean yeah. it's all high def anyway yeah. but it only has yeah. to look that good at that size yeah I mean I don't think anyone I mean does anyone watch the rock music channel on whatever I mean well or, you know, I'm I sure know. people still yeah. do but, again, but it's not like yeah. MTV actually has any music on it so no yeah yeah people have got Foxtel I think I think probably um I want to say CMC again. It's not what it is. The Country Music Channel. Yeah, that's CMC. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not CMC Music Factory. No. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, it's not weird. It's just a thing. Um, 
<laughs> Make a word out of those letters. What's it? CMC. Um, CMC. Um, I've got one. What? Circumcision? <laughs> oh, mucus. There you go. <laughs> Good. Oh. Yeah. I can even make a sentence out of those two. Yeah, you don't need a lot of mucus to make a circumcision. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, um, circumcision without an is a good way to dry up the mucus. Hey, that's not bad. Dang it. Yeah. I got more. It's fun. Think. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I caught up with, uh, with our friend Dan Tobias this week. Oh, lovely. Yeah. How is he? Uh, really good, really good. He'd be good to get on. He would be great to get be fascinating on. Fascinating. We can't. He's too. It's too late. He's he's away for eight weeks as of. I think this week. Okay. But when he comes back, when you come back, Dan. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll be watching this. Um. Dan has received worldwide acclaim uh, through festival shows and stuff with his one man show, The Orchid and the Crow, which is all a, a one man show he wrote about his. Um, journey with testicular cancer and it's amazing isn't it I haven't seen it oh did you not come no, that night I did not come that night oh okay so I, wasn't I saw invited. It. I'm sure that's not true I wasn't invited. I'm sure that's not true I wasn't invited mm. uh, but I did know that the show was on and I could have got another night so it's irrelevant I weren't invited were you actually not invited uh, I don't know. It feels weird. I may me. have been invited. How, Rob, when Leanne, did you, Sarah, when did you stop Sam, inviting me to stuff? I've never stopped inviting you to stuff. Ah, uh, I see. You can't play. Don't stop inviting. <laughs> oh, this is a 2018 rewrite. Mm. Yeah, you can't blame my new That's girlfriend on not inviting me to stuff in the past. <sighs> I'm gonna blame your new girlfriend for anything. You know, you actually have to blame me for all that anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that was really nice. Um, he uh, he's a he's a real artist. I mean, he started out doing the sort of cover band thing, and um, has really chosen to push all that aside now. He was the he was the front man for Eighties Enough for a long time. He was yeah, and then he was the on again off again front man for Eighties Enough when he would come back to town after touring shows that he was doing. Um, and eventually venues were saying they want to just, we need the one guy. Um, Does they still say that? No. Yeah. Because hmm. it's not ever the same guy. Innate is enough? Yeah. I think the point is that it is. Oh. Innate, not standard deliver. Eight is enough. You're right. I yeah. apologise. Yeah, no, no, you don't have to yeah. apologise. Um, so he now makes his living... Um, touring theatre shows which is fucking that he's written and performs <sighs> in yeah that's great isn't it amazing yeah it's well, it just, really brave and really inspiring yeah but it just, just goes to show if you if you put in the work and you and you get good and he has um, that there's uh yeah, he's so I've seen the, the show twice. He's the one man show. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff, but I've seen this particular one man show twice. So I saw the first season of it. What's the duo he's got? Is that still happening? Do well, I, um, d- d- no, okay, okay. <laughs> you won't be seeing that anytime soon. No. Yeah, okay. No. No, no. Um I talked to you about that off air, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> um uh yeah, and then I saw the return season of it, and it's. I'd love to see it again, you know, after because it's. You know how stuff develops, you know, even just with what we do, like yeah. the cover stuff we do. How it's not like we've ever rehearsed, so it just develops a rhythm yeah. of its own as yeah. it goes along, you know. So he's been. I guess he's been doing this for three years, four years now. Getting comfortable. Yeah, I want you to. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, that's that's the key to the stuff. Huh. Hmm. Um, so that's some what's going on from me. Cool. Give me, give me some what's going on from you, and then I've got something else. Uh, well, I, uh, I had my... Uh, illness. <laughs> so I've just got a new idea. <laughs> we need to light the idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had my illness. I went to Sydney to see my friend Shelley and her family. 
that was nice until the next morning I got sick uh, then it was less nice catching the train back to the airport then hanging out at the airport for a while then being on the airplane and then coming oh, back oh fuck oh no oh dude terrible oh dude I didn't know that part when we spoke earlier today yeah do you know <laughs> on the first day I went to toilet 11 times 11 times why did you count I, it got to the point where I go, how many times have I been to toilet? Okay. All right. Twice there. Where was that? Where was that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, oh, your poor little anus. Yes, it was raw. <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> God for Savalon. Um, Did you put Savalon on your butthole? Yeah, I was concerned. Wow, that was my nickname in high school, by the way. Savalon? On your butthole. Oh, on your butthole. <laughs> Savalon on your butthole. Oh, no, the sorry. whole thing. Yeah, it's not butthole. a contraction. <laughs> There definitely needs to be sometimes. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you go right in I've there. I've got good control. Um, <laughs> oh, dude. Anyway. Uh, oh, sick on airplanes the worst. Yeah. I, 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 um. Not as bad as I went to, where did I come back from? My friend Nat and I went to Queensland a couple of months ago. I came back and the guy sat next to him on a plane and just did this, picked his nose all the time and went. <laughs> I just, one time a booger landed on my arm. I'm not a violent man, but I almost was. And there was almost murder on the oh, God. dance floor. <laughs> Get these motherfucking boogers off my motherfucking <laughs> arm. What What a piece of work. <laughs> Just like didn't think anyone was noticing. And because I was wearing a T-shirt. Oh, he, dude, well, every, on your arm, arm. Yeah, but every time he went... Yeah, you could Air feel it. Was like, I've got a hairy arm. Yeah, yeah, you could. He was ruffling your Neanderthal. It, it. If I really could make a TV, comedy TV show about the absurd things people have done around me when they didn't think I was aware, mm. we could together make it. I reckon I do things that you're obscene. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if we should take that audio out of that, I reckon that'll sound really good. <laughs> You're obscene. See, I'll never be able to do it again. So we, okay. Yeah. Uh, I um. I had a stop. Another uh, idea. <laughs> I had a um, an overnight stopover in Bangkok on my way from Singapore to Phuket. Did I wasn't there? No, you weren't. You weren't invited. Yeah. Um, again. Uh. And I took some really bad drugs in, in Bangkok and was oh, I've done that. really sick. Huh. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And was... This was at the height of... I want to say SARS, where everyone was very highly attuned to anyone who might be presenting in any sort of... Do you like that drink? Way. Yeah. yeah. Big SARS. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Okay. SARS. Yeah. Was it big SARS here? It was Woodroffs, oh, which was a South Australian. I don't know. You just mean sarsaparilla. Yeah. Yeah, I used to like it. I occasionally have one. Um, like I have soft drink maybe once every six months. It's, and it's almost exclusively vanilla Coke in a can if I'm going to have it because I just fucking oh, love it. I remember vanilla Coke. Oh, my God. Vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> Miller Vanilla? Vanilla yeah. Coke? Yeah. McGilla Gorilla Coke? Yeah. It's fake. It's purple. Oh. <laughs> Miller okay. Vanilla Coke. Um, Sounds like Coke, but it's not the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> and my buddy woke me up early the morning we were supposed to be going. He said, Do you want to come and get a coffee? And I said, Yeah. I was, yeah. All right. I sat on the edge of the bed. Oh, uh, no. 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 No, you go and get it. You do what you need to do. I'm just going to lie here for a while. And I slept. I, re- I went straight back to sleep and slept for another couple of hours. And, and uh, then we had to get up and go. And I vomited uh. out the door of the taxi on the way there. And then we're at the airport. And it's Bangkok Airport. So it's a, um, a shuttle bus to get from the departure gate to the aeroplane. And my two mates are sitting opposite me like it's you know jump seats kind of thing two mates are sitting opposite me and I'm sitting next to a complete stranger as in he was entirely there and I didn't know who he was um, a complete stranger? yeah, yeah. oh yeah. god I only know partially as complete from, strangers as distinct from a perfect stranger <laughs> oh look that hair he's perfect um, and uh, 
I mean, I don't know what colour I was, but it can't have been pleasant. I was obviously going to... My, my two mates are scrambling to this guy next to... Because he had a plastic bag with yeah. him. G- yeah. Give him so, the bag. Yeah. What? The bag, the bag. What? Just and they grabbed it and tipped all these stuff out. <laughs> oh, and, oh, oh, fuck. And just trying to be unobtrusive to get on an international flight and be vomiting. Wow. So, so yeah, I feel yeah. your... Not your anus, but yeah. certainly your, your penis. Yeah. Uh, it was rough. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. That's life. That's life. That's what other people see. <laughs> what is that? Uh, you getting emails? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm very popular. Yeah. Because uh, I'm doing Dracula stuff at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> How many songs have you got to do? Uh, well, uh, because the new... Okay, because Dracula's... Oh, how many songs have you got to do? Uh, what do you think I'm... What? you got to count for me. <laughs> I realised halfway <laughs> through looking at your face. <laughs> um, how many songs do you have to do? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do one. One song. Ah, ah, ah. Who's your challenge? Two. So, yeah, he, well, he, well, he was a bit. <laughs> he was a bit Italian. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, because Dracula's got a bit of Italian about him. What? what? Well, he's from Transylvania, which is just oh, yeah, across just the border. Close from... from... <laughs> it is. Is it? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this question then. Oh, yeah. okay. So uh, I've been doing Dracula stuff. Because the new show opens on uh, Melbourne Grand Final Day. Uh, the 28th. 9th. 28th? 9th. 28th? Stop saying it. Nah. <laughs> uh, no. 29th. 29th <laughs> of September. <laughs> um, I didn't doubt you for a second. <laughs> no, no. No, you didn't. Except those four or a times third. you said the 28th. <laughs> or a fifth. I didn't doubt you for a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I, I had backing vocals to do on uh, one of the songs today, but I couldn't because um, I was tired. Yeah. Did you say I was tired? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You'd be a great four-year-old. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> have you, Matthew, Matthew, have you done the vocals for Dracula's? I was uh, tired. I was tired. <laughs> How many songs have you got to do? One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I've good. got. I've actually only got one song. Oh, that's what I was going to say because um, Dracula's is no longer operational here in Melbourne, um, but the, the Gold Coast venue is going great guns. Um, the new show is kind of like a a hybridy best of. So there's a new version of one of their sort of old classic acts. There's a couple of new songs, um, and then I've got to do the, you know the finale, which always takes forever because it's. Chop bits yeah, of the, yeah, five songs sort of so all the cast get to do their bits and pieces and then an encore on top of that. So um, so that's what I need to work on this week. Uh, but, of course, I did a two-hour final set at my gig last night, so I, I was in no position after four hours sleep and, yeah. and an hour and a half. I felt like race. I had a two-hour final set last night. I bet you did. <laughs> Poor little fell. Yeah. Aww. Um, Here's the thing. Dom. What's that? Is that a TV show? Here's the thing. Oh, it's Mark Marin, isn't it? Isn't that his TV show? No, what's it called? Oh, yeah. it's, a TV, it's a TV show. Yeah. What's his podcast called? What's the fuss? No. Something what? like that. Anyway, never mind. Okay. He's well. funny, though. I like him. <laughs> oh, call it what you like. I'm a woman I be. This is just another one of God's people. Etymology. What's etymology? <laughs> what did you for breakfast? Uh, High etymology. Yeah. Um, vomitorium. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a really simple one. I mean, it's not simple, but it's just, a, it's just, there's no, that's an, this is actually not etymology so much as, what does that word mean? I thought I'd bring it up because of everything you'd been bringing up for right. the last four days. Well, didn't they used to go to a hall and feast and vomit and feast and vomit and feast and vomit? Like, that's how the old Greeks and Romans used to party their asses off. Why is it always about donkeys with you? Yeah. It's two in a row. Two donkeys in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. No? It's, um, 
it's an entrance or an exit in ancient Roman buildings. Oh, that makes sense. Nothing to do with vomiting. Oh, well, how's this? Speaking of which, when you go to Rome and you, um, you want to leave somewhere, it's called an ushita. The exit is an ushita. Really? Yes. Which is funny. <laughs> if you speak English and you know what happens from an exit, ushita. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I go on. So, destra means right, as in the opposite of left. Um, so if you're on a train in Italy, it'll tell you what platform to get off at. So, like, uh, destra, uscita. Um, but left is sinestra, sinister, because Latin is, of course, so persecutory to people who were cursed by the devil. No! The left-handed people were sinister. Sinestra. This is... That's fucking great. Yeah, how's that? So my... My left-handed sister... Wow, I really thought you were going to make a My Left Foot reference then, but go on. Oh, well. <laughs> no. Yes? Yeah. Your sinister. Your left-handed sister is She's sinister. sinister. She's your sister. Cursed by the devil. Because they were like devil's right hand. How's that? It's I good. got a word. You're going. Uh, from the book of words. Oh, the book, book of, of worms. worms. What do you think curfew means? Well, where did a curfew came from? come from? Where did come curfew from? come from? It <laughs> came from. It's been a long year. <laughs> <laughs> Have one of those lives. <clears throat> ah... So, to have a curfew means that you have a, um, a finite length of time in which you're allowed to do a certain thing. Or a specified time at which you have to stop doing a certain thing. Yes. Uh, so that you would you would curtail your activities. Yes. Hmm. Very good. Few, lots <gasps> of people. No, 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 no. no what, I can't. Go on. What would so cur? Yes. Few. If it was uh, from a different language, what would you guess? Few might be. So it's not F E W. No, F E U yeah. French. Uh, yes. F. Mm. Yeah. F-E-U. But I don't know what it means. Yeah. I know the word. Uh huh. Um, f. It's male. It's uh. It's not un. I can't. I cannot remember what it means. Go on. Right. The curfew was a medieval law devised to minimise the risk of fire. Ah, motherfucker. Yeah, the regulation was known in old French as curfew. Later, curfew. Literally, cover the fire. Good. Uh, Which gave curfew in Anglo-Norman, or curfew in Middle English. Each evening, usually at 8 o'clock, a bell would ring. And to signal to... That was the cue, by the way, for my computer to go, bing! (laughs) Extinguish the fire, or to cover the embers with a special lid until morning. In time, curfew was applied to the bell, as well as the regulation. Indeed, in the earliest English references, which date from the 13th century, the word is obviously applied to the signal or to the hour of its ringing. Using the curfew bell as a means to controlling activity in a town is very long established. It's a tradition that of the curfew was introduced into England by William the Conqueror, who then used the bell to prevent seditious groups meeting under cover of darkness. So no one's allowed out after curfew, and if you're out, you're in trouble. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Look at history repeating itself. Unbelievable. It's good, huh? Yeah, great. Good one. Curfew. What is that book? The Chronology of Words and Phrases, A Thousand Years in History of English by Linda and Roger Flavel. Goodness gracious, I'm sorry I asked. Yes. (laughs) I can read it. Oh, is that your bookmark? I thought that was a thing. I thought you had something to show me. 
Yeah, that was a. It's a no, that's my bookmark, mate. Uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a Christmas card I got from my neighbour. Nice. Who found my chickens when they flew over the fence three years ago? Aww. Yeah. Um, I think Becky's got chickens. New chickens. God, is she okay? She didn't have them. Oh. She didn't give birth to them. All right. Well, no, she hatched them. She w- <laughs> In no way did they escape her. <laughs> so she's not getting laid. Ah, oh. oh, come on. Good joke. No, it's good. Oh, okay. It's a good joke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so she is? Oh. What came first? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this, again, this is the second thing we need to talk about off air. What? <laughs> what? The way I just ramble on in podcasts. No. No, oh. no, no. I'll talk to you about the first thing, about Dan, and then the other thing, about who came first. Ah. The <coughs> rooster. <laughs> oh. Surely. Okay, right. Out of the... Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's a... Goodness it's a redundant mate. question. I uh, I did a gig in ba- I did a wedding gig in Ballarat on Saturday night. Cold. Good. <laughs> Lord. In Ballarat, cold. Um, the forecast snow didn't actually transpire, so that's. Oh, good. So it was too cold to or snow. Precipitate. Uh, yeah. It was. That's too cold to snow. Three degrees feels like minus three point. Something. I love the the feels like. It's good. It's hilarious. Because I walked outside at midnight pack my stuff into the car and he went oh my god it does feel like my well story. I was still just in suit pants like I wasn't in jeans or anything and yeah. you know I mean they're it's like one of my grey ones and it's um <laughs> the suit yeah <laughs> um so it's light so my gonads just crawled up inside me <laughs> and found themselves like a hitherto unknown organ to yeah. hide themselves in. Yeah. Ridiculously fucking cold. No, like Luke Skywalker in the Tauntaun and Empire Strikes Back. They were very much <laughs> like that. They forged themselves a new warm hidey hole. <laughs> nice. Don't worry, they'll be back for Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put little Shwa- fucking buns on them, like Princess Leia. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Not, yeah. not uh, what do you call those things? Not Matt, earmuffs. I was going to say Matt, muffs. I was gonna say Matt Burgers. Burgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, ball muffs. Uh, ball muffs. Not yeah. nut warmers? I think that's a that's a, <laughs> isn't that a seaside town in the UK. Yeah, ball muffs. Yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I think it's gone well. Life? <laughs> or just the, the naming of ta- naming of towns. The podcast the naming of towns. Today. That's another thing we're going. Why did this thing got named by this? Oh, huh? yeah, town names are fucking great. Yeah. Particularly, I think Australia is great because I really do think... I think there are a lot of things named in Australia by, um, uh, I guess, Anglo explorers who had an Indigenous Australian tracker or guide. I said, what do you call that over there? And he actually is... Refer- I'm sure there are so many places they're referring to how much of an idiot the white man is, right? And so they would say a word, and it doesn't actually mean. So that oh yeah, I think there's a lot of like those in jokes with the indigenous yeah okay guys who like were having a laugh, and they're like, oh, this is what we're going to call it. Yeah. Yeah okay, yeah. put a list together. I like the sound of that. Yeah yeah. I like the idea that that's. Uh... What's this place called? Wagga Wagga. <laughs> Oh, okay, great. Yeah, Wagga Wagga. Yeah. Pretty town, Wagga Wagga. Have you ever yeah, been there? Yeah, it's a beautiful town. Yeah. 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 Why were you there? Uh, Andrew Merrifield's parents bought a hotel there. <laughs> well, bloody hell. And I went to school uh, with Andrew, and in the summer holidays, I believe, after grade six, my friend Mark and I caught a train from Melbourne to Wagga Wagga. Shit. We're 12 years old. Our parents let us catch a train together. Wow. Yeah. How like long was the train? Eight or nine hours? Oh, God, I thought it would have been longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we went out for a few days. They had a pool. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. 
I think, oh, and the second time I went there, here's, this is something really funny, uh, was a, m many years later, I think I was 19, and I went up to do a New Year's Eve gig with a band, I can't remember, I filled in for James Ryan, and we played at that hotel, but they didn't own it anymore. Oh, shit. Yeah. I um, My experience with, I went there to play a backyard birthday party, I think. A backyard? A wedding? Yeah, yeah. Wow. No, wedding. Yeah. Wedding. <clears throat> um, and they were love, really lovely people that organised for everything for me. And uh, I organised to hire a car because it was, you know, I mean, it was, I arrived on the wedding day and was going to leave the next day. You know, so Just the last thing they did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hired a PA up there for me. Like, they took care of all that sort of stuff. So all I had to do was really just walk in, plug in and play. Um, except that when I got to the airport and tried to pick up my hire car, my driver's license had expired. <laughs> Only by a couple of days. Yeah. But I literally had no idea. And I uh, said to the girl, so, um, right, so what do I do now? And she said, I can't give you a car. <laughs> oh. And the guy behind me said, well, I'll, I'll take you into town. It's all right. Fucking Wagga. Brilliant. Yeah. Legends. Just lovely country folk. Brilliant. Someone said and the me, next day someone drove me back. Like someone just randomly at the hotel heard me on the phone um, yeah. ringing a taxi. I'll take you back to the airport. We're yeah. going now. It's all right. Brilliant. Well, someone told me recently, like, I know country people are the best people. I went, well, compared to who? And that person said, oh, you know, city people are so unfriendly. I was like, I don't know. I spent a lot of time in the city. Like, I grew up in the country and I met a lot of shitheads in the country. Like, and I've lived in the city for a long time. I don't live in the city anymore, but I did. I met a lot of lovely people in the city. Oh. Uh, maybe it's you. <laughs> and it's good. And um, he the, said, see, city people are pricks. Well, the response was, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe okay. it is them. But, I mean, I don't disagree. There's lots of lovely people in the country, but, I would, like, to just flat out say, country people are better. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, man. Like... It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you do have... You there is good and bad in everyone. Elvis Costello? No. <laughs> wow, was that my yeah. Elvis Costello? Yeah. Uh, it certainly wasn't my Michael Jackson or Paul McCartney, which is what that song was. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, did I mention this on the last podcast? I listened to Thriller on vinyl? No. And No, it's... you actually sent it to me in real life. Oh, I right. It's amazing, apart from that song, that Paul McCartney, Michael... Ebony and Ivory? No, the girl, it was The Girl oh. Is Mine. Oh, shit. Oh, I did a bad thing. Oh, right. Babe, Maddie did a bad, bad thing. Yeah, no, I was thinking Ebony and Ivory, which was... Stevie, Stevie Wonder, Wonder and Michael Jackson. And Michael, yeah. Is it? No, it's... it's, no, it's no, it's... It's uh, Paul McCartney, yeah. <laughs> That's But really The Girl Is Mine is a... It, it, I mean just has no right being on that record. Particularly though, like the- I'm still reeling from the idea that Ebony and Ivory might have been done by Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, <laughs> you know, cause they're white and black. Well, he's definitely, yeah. <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. No, yeah. It, yeah. but apparently it did. I love that. photographs of my penis. Mm -hmm. I, I just love that he released that song without any Fuck. hint of irony at all. No hint of irony. Yeah. Uh, is The Girl Is Mine not a good song? No. Right. It's, so Michael, it's, you're not going to fight about yeah. this. <laughs> oh, she's mine. Oh, she's mine. Yeah, it's great. It's like listening to, you know, the Fat Controller, you know, <laughs> tell off some kid on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's getting on my train. No, she's on my train. Like, it's just <laughs> terrible. Um, uh, no, in his defence, it's not it's not atrocious, but compared to the rest of that record, yeah, which right. is just magnificent. Uh, uh, and the thing is, you know what? Listening to it on record is so good because the guitar solo in Beat It doesn't sound out of tune when it's on record. Now, how is that possible? Well, it's just that all... Because records are crummy. The sound like crap. Yes. 
Like they I, fucking do. There's no way. See, like you see, like I'm, I'm one of those like cinema purists where I go, oh, I just look at film, you know, with all the flicker and the dust. It's so lovely. It is, but you know, I, I way way prefer to watch a digital. Yeah. Print. It looks great. It yeah. sounds great. Nothing goes wrong. It's fine. Like records sound like crap, and anyone tells you they don't sound like crap, like is like. No, no, you need the 180 gram vinyl. Shut yeah. up. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sitting down and listening to records is really cool. And doing Super fun. Thing. It's really great. It's tactile. And it's visceral. It's, yeah, it's, a, the it's popping an experience. Is cool. Absolutely. It's really good. But, and maybe there's an element of the fact that I'm listening to Thriller, which of a copy of Thriller, which came out in the 80s. So maybe there's a fact that, well, I'm not listening to a version of Thriller that would be produced now from a digital master. Maybe it does sound a lot better. Sure. Right. But, and maybe only the first 10 times you listen to it will actually sound any good. And then after that... But I can tell you, I've got all these records. Just, I put on, you know, Noiseworks Touch. Fucking cool record. Sound like crap. Compared to the fact that if you put on Spotify, you're like, whoa, is that what that song sounds like? And that's Spotify. Let alone yeah. if you actually found a CD of it. Well, there put you put that on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So I find it, it was really enjoyable listening to, to a whole bunch of stuff on record. Uh, what did I put on? Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. It's like... There's, there's no, there's no bass in this. No, there's no bass in that in that album. At well, all. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's but crazy, dude. Yeah, it's just really, it's really interesting to think that uh, something in our, uh, in people's psychology with going back to vinyl, thinks it's about it sounds better. It's like anyone with ears. And. Uh, 100%. You know, and a brain can just go, no, that does not sound better. Mm. It's got a thing and it's got a character, mm. sure, that you might like. But it's maybe it's the same thing the way people use language to say, well, the band sucks. It's like, no, you just don't like them. The band doesn't suck. They uh, play fine. They're not bad. That song is good. You just don't like it. Yeah, and you don't like maybe. it for some other reason other than the music. You don't like it because the guy looks like that as opposed to it was like that. Yeah. It's not crap. I got to use, I know what guitar playing is. That's not crap. Um, I think I said to you, I listened just recently to an interview with Steve Stevens. Yes. Um, he talked about, so Steve Stevens uh, was and is again, Billy Idol's guitarist. Yes. Super fucking player. Incredible. Like, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people might only know him for lots of fucking whammy bar histrionics, but... He's got chops, dude. Oh, he's an amazing player. And his flamenco yeah. stuff is really good. Yeah, he's like pink tight, stands on one foot, plays guitar. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you don't even notice him in the garden. Okay. Weeks go by. All <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So he played on Dirty Diana. Yes. The Michael Jackson song. Yeah. And... Uh, he, so his stipulation when he did that session um, was that because he'd done session because he did a lot of session stuff and he turned up to I can't he, I, he may not have even named the artist because he was quite um, diplomatic about it all but he said he went to a session one time and, and the actual artist he was working for just wasn't there and there was just you know just and it, like it was him and the engineer yeah there you go okay great so he said Michael's got to be there and I need to be in the video. Great. And uh, I think the interview, interviewer asked him how much he got paid. He said, yeah, well, the thing about that is I, I didn't get paid. You aren't. So that was a thing. If you want to do that, you don't get paid. Well, yeah, I'll, I need to be in the video and I, I need Michael to be there was on the back of him getting in touch with Eddie Van Halen saying, how much did you charge for the Billie Jean session? Nothing. He said, I didn't. I, I was just there. So, yeah. And he said, Betty Van Halen didn't charge Michael Jackson to do the session. I don't think I can. That's great. Isn't that fucking cool? Yeah. What a great attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I thought but that was a great it's story. It's like um, not the same thing, but similar. Matt Robinson's record. I spent, I record like I recorded the drums. I'm pretty sure I recorded the drums. Huh. Um, like I play. I'd look it up uh, on my CD collection. I yeah. I've given it to Steve. I recorded the, the bass. I recorded Steve's bass parts. I think I did all all of that, um, and 
I did my stuff. Um, and he's like, oh, what? did you record my stuff? No, you, you, you did that here. Did I? Yeah. Um, but it's like, oh, well, I've got budget to play. I'm like, dude, like one day, one day I'll call you, you know, and I was a bit, it was a bit like a godfather moment. One day I'm going to call you. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, yeah, it was, I guess it's certain things. You go, oh, just, yeah. On that, um, certainly with you having done that and me saying, did you, did you? Um, isn't it amazing that you and I have got to a point in our careers that, so I listen to, to big recording artists uh, talk about albums and songs and all that sort of stuff. And they, and I'm flabbergasted when these guys who I hold up as, you know, um, insp- inspiration to me and all that sort of stuff, don't know all the ins and outs of all the shit. Because I've read the liner notes. Well, they haven't. Uh, they right, did it. Yeah, they, did they did it, it they fucking 15 remember. years ago. Yeah. I mean, I've poured over these notes <laughs> and just fucking every... And they were coked up and like... <laughs> yeah. And so I listen to these guys and like, how can you fucking not know that? But now it happens to me. It's like oh, when right. I... Uh, pulled out that Matt Robinson album, Radio. Yeah. I have no I no recollection of ever playing on that. Yeah, okay. My name's on it. Yeah. Playing guitar parts. And when I listen to it, it's like... Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah, that yeah. sounds like me. Yeah. No memory of it. Okay. At yeah. all. But you... I, I mean, that probably has a lot to do with the fact of where you record it. You're probably in here where you do so much stuff for so many projects that they all kind of meld into Well, I guess, but I mean, yeah, yeah that, but that's what I mean. It's kind of the same thing, isn't yeah. it? I, I just... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. It's interesting. Um, yeah, I would I would do... I guess it depends de- Depends what it is. I think... Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm up in the air about it. I'm tra- now I'm thinking about it. It's like, well, I wouldn't just play on anyone's anything. Like, I'm busy. I've got stuff to do. Um, mm. I, I have trouble, so with our friend Rob, who has asked to sing on some of his stuff, you know, and he, it's like, oh, will you spend a day recording vocals on a song? I was like, oh, I'm tired. Like, that's, <laughs> I was tired. Yeah, and it's like seven hours recording. That's three gigs in one day, you know. Ah, oh, oh, my head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like the thought of it's harrowing. And so yeah, yeah. Um, I look at my weeks and I go, I can maybe fit it in then, man. Like, because I can't do it. I can't do it on a week. I'm doing five days in a row. And that would be the sixth day. Yeah. You can't do it. Yeah. Um, remember when we did the, of course you do. I'm really saying, remember yeah. when we did the, for the benefit of, yeah. um, the podcast with Darren Holcomb. Yes. Yes. And later that evening I was going to be singing on, he talked about his master's project. Yes. Go back and listen to episode 267? 59? Or 60? What? What are we up to now? 62? I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Uh, I'm thinking of um, the Pot of Thunder podcast I listen to. They're up to 273. <laughs> <laughs> I just cross-correlated something. Orcs. <laughs> so. Totes. Yeah, uh, we, we haven't done 270 podcasts. No. No. Um, uh, so, uh, he's talking about his master's project. So, we did vocals, um, lead vocals and backing vocals on one of his songs that night. Um, and then part of the project is to see how online collaborations work and also how, like, here's the traditional studio situation of the producer and the engine, the recording engineer and the, and the artist coming in and doing their thing all in one place. Um, and then last week I recorded vocals, uh, lead vocals and backing vocals on a song of his here at home just to see for his master's project, how it's all going to, uh, how it all holds together as a, as a, a multi song album, right? all done in different ways with different sorts of collaborations. So, but, um, you know, that's, and he had parts that he needed. Think about getting someone in to sing, to get uh, a singer in to sing your songs because 
you like you do that because you want their voice on it. Yeah. So that's um, Darren's pretty cool in just kind of letting me actually be a singer. Yeah. Like this is this is the guide vocal. That's kind of where I want it. Let's just try it and see how it goes. It, and so I'll you know I'll do something and I'll you know make a variation on it. And he's like, yeah, that that's not actually how I heard it, but that's 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 pretty cool. Let's like let's do that a few more times and like so kind of quite a collaborative process there. Um, interesting to do stuff here where I make decisions kind of unilaterally, at least in the moment of this is how I think I'm going to sing this and then ship it off. Yeah, cool. So anyway, that's cool. put it together. He found, he sent me just a tiny MP3. I, I told him when I spoke with him, I said, look, I've, I've uploaded them all so you can see what you think. Let me know. Um, that was a day early. So I said, like, I've done it all today. So you can have a listen to them. I said on one of the vocal tracks, my cat comes in to talk to me about it all. So, so he just sent me the bit of Scritchy. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I said I deliberately left that one on there just to see if you could. And so he found it. Great. Scritchy found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you once know someone yes. whose job you oh, did once know someone? I did. Whoa. Uh, whose job it was to be Celine Dion's I did. line singer? I or, cannot think of what her name was. And am I right in remembering her job was to sing all the demo tracks of songs that were getting submitted to yep. Celine? Yep. Because she could sing so much like Celine. Yep. That, and with her phrasing and her tone, that uh, when the production company, I assume, when the manager heard it, they could go, oh, yes, I can imagine Celine doing this. That will narrow it down to these 30 songs, and then we'll take these yep. to Celine out of the 120 we've presenting yeah that was her job i cannot think of her name she was she was excellent wayne jones the bass player was the conduit he Uh, he brought her into was it delta goodrum no because she could do that oh really oh she is celine dion i mean i yeah okay i mean maybe uh, she's as good she's amazing delta is a phenomenal singer yeah she's a phenomenal singer Yeah, yeah she is yeah not my um, thing. I'm not saying I like it, but I like that the noise that comes out of that woman is yeah, amazing. Yeah, okay. I've yeah. never. I mean, I think Celine Dion's f- unfucking believable. Yeah, she's. I mean, the reason why she's is where she is is because there's no one like her. She's mm. stunning. Yeah. The um the seventieth birthday I'm playing at in a couple of weeks solo. Uh, it's through an agent. You've done more gigs than that. <laughs> um. Uh. They sent me through a song list, things they want to hear. Of course. And Celine Dion's on there. Yeah. Saw her in Brisbane. Oh, my God. I wrote back to the agent and said, what? I'm a male vocalist. Yeah. I said, I mean, as it happens, I actually do a Celine Dion song. <laughs> but to be honest, in the context of a gig, it's kind of a comedy showpiece. Yeah. My heart might go on, but my vocal won't. It's not even that one. <laughs> um so, you know, uh, and it's why I don't do much, it's why I don't do much work with agents because they do that sort of thing. Yeah, they're they don't bother to filter the results before they email the act and say, so this is what they've asked for. Well, no, that's yeah. where you say, um, you booked a male solo acoustic guitarist singer. What the fuck do you think by asking for Celine Dion? It's great. Do you know what? To, to That's be, what they're supposed to be getting their fucking 15% for. Well, the, to be fair, not to, not so much to the agent. It's like, you know, I was the other day someone said, do you know, do you know Joe Lane? Like, so like, you know, the, now we do live in a world these days where... I know Andrew Fat as well. <laughs> <laughs> Joe um, We do live in a world where YouTube is just full of people doing their own versions of songs where it's an uncanny sure. interpretation of it. So um, th- there is that thing of, oh, you know, maybe he does a version of that and it'll that's great, you know. So, I mean, it's different when that's a different scenario. Do you know something? No, I don't. <clears throat> oh, great. But not to get booked through an agent who goes, this is what they've asked for. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the main thing to me is that um, 
if a I mean, it's a 70th birthday party. Let's assume that, the, and this, the wife's organising, so let's just assume she's 70 as well. Yeah. If she says these are suggested songs, and, and look, her email... Oh, for her then, they're not for the husband. Oh, no, Jesus. But they're totally lovely, and it yeah. was not, you know, unless he can do these songs, it's not happening. Yeah. Like, it'll all, be, it'll all be completely fine. And it was all very, I'm sure Matt's got, you know... Plenty of songs. Yeah, yeah. But it was really quite specific, and it was stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they're not thinking um, if, if it hadn't have been that she said we saw her in Brisbane and oh my god yeah that's not that's a different thing that's they want someone to sing that song and be fucking blown away But yeah. and it's like I'm not skinny enough to be telling you on the side <laughs> from anything else uh, she does get that resonance from being hollow um <laughs> No, I'm serious. Yeah. Um, you mean like hollow bones, like a yeah. like a little hummingbird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From having like small cavities to vibrate through. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting to look at someone's physiology and go, "Oh, that makes sense." That sound. Yeah. Yeah, like Steven Tyler, like to like the size of that mouth, and therefore like the physiology of everything that goes with that, and the, into the, and then you see him singing and what how his neck kind of fans out you go oh yeah that that make it, that's why I can't do that huh yeah this is really interesting Jeez, he can still sing amazing yeah yeah he's but like 111 uh, years old another guy who you know tried to go country and you know songs, on Bobo songs were not good is that is that the album yeah, the harmonica album I don't know if that's the album but I heard a few songs I mean, yeah um but at least so many of Aerosmith's <laughs> songs were kind of country esque. Oh, they though. are though, yeah, yeah. Very so, much so many of them. Yeah. Um, but what a fucking. Here's band. the thing about um, here's the thing about, like talking about your um, experience with the agent and you know punters asking for things, not really knowing the difference. I was holding my guitar at a gig on Saturday, <laughs> sitting on a chair, set up, guitar in hand. Are you the DJ here every Saturday? No. Oh, so you don't play every week? No, I play here every second week. Ah, oh, so you DJ here every second week? No, I've, I'm not a DJ. I never have been. I probably never will be. <laughs> I wasn't even, like, I could have just said, no, I'm an acoustic performer. I, I could have been a nice person about it. But she was easily my age. I was just flabbergasted at how uh, that she just didn't know yeah. what she was saying. I wasn't insulted, right? I was just like, no, you should know better. Like, that's... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know you can't tell someone's IQ by the way they look, but she didn't look that dumb. I was angry. Really? Yeah. Because it was the same thing. Like, and then on Sunday night, have you guys got... No, I haven't got anything. <laughs> yeah. I know we've mentioned this before on the podcast. We're like, I haven't got anything. It's do you know if you're a performer? Not have you got... It's not a freaking MP3 file in my brain. You nuffs. Ha <laughs> ha. If you've learned anything from this podcast is that I'm not always a nice guy. <laughs> he mostly is. Yeah, but not always. Mm. Don't ask me if I've got something. Unless um, it's gastro, which I had. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't got it anymore, though. Are you going home? I'm yeah, staying here. I'm going home. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we should probably finish up then. Yeah, it's, it's quite a, late. Oh, it's an hour and 13 too. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> no, I'm going home. Fuck. Can't say I didn't offer. Slider biscuits. <laughs> oh, yeah. That kind of thing. <laughs> Bye.